Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring it down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some really great news. First up, PayPal's Venmo launches crypto trading for an additional 70 million users to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. And this is just great news for mass adoption. But the real question is, which cryptos are they going to be allowing on this platform? On top of that, we'll take a look at some more news about regulation as Biden administration developing crypto regs and the Treasury, which is Gensler, is to provide direction to the SEC and they give us a little snippet about what is happening as a potential Bitcoin ETF. And finally, we'll wrap it all up with some, in my opinion, some concerning news uh, about Voyager and their user or customer agreement and what that entails and what it means for you who use Voyager or think about using Voyager. So we'll take a look at those three things, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today is not a bad day, in all honesty. Uh, we're at 2.05 trillion. Now, yes, this is gonna sound funny when I say this, but yes, uh, we did lose uh, a couple hundred billion dollars in market cap, but uh, hey, it's cryptocurrency. And again, if you're new to this, this space, uh, watch the video we did yesterday. Uh, which talked about the different uh, happenings as far as these bull runs and how corrections are very normal. Actually, the average correction is uh, between uh, uh, 29 and 40 percent, so we're average about 35 percent dip in in, uh, in these corrections. And uh, last one, we only saw like it was like 20, 21 percent. So not a big deal in the traditional market. Uh, people are jumping out the windows. In crypto, we call that a Monday. Not a big deal, uh, but uh, here we are. So. Again, uh, 2.05 trillion, and uh, I will take that uh, today. The, the sentiment in the market is still bearish, and if you don't know, we're talking about Trade the Chain. This is the sentiment analysis tool that I use. Link's in the description for a, uh, a two-week trial to check it out, because what I like to do is just take a look at what's going on the coins. Oh, and before we, we get going, the hottest on Twitter over 24 hours is Dogecoin. Let's take a look at the price of that. Pirate Chain, uh, R, it's always funny. Uh, Vertcoin, Alpha, RLC, Easy Pulls, and Kava. Sure, this is this is where the magic is, though. I'm going to click on coins and see what we got. Well, Bitcoin's at 56,000 over the one hour. It's gone up almost two percent. 24 hours on one and a half percent. Ethereum's at 2286. Binance Coin 558. And everything is over the last hour is up a little bit. And it's not like massive, uh, huge number. Let's see what up what went up massively. Well, Dogecoin, just so you know. Is up a whopping two percent, but it's down twelve percent for in a twenty-four hour time frame. And you see this hourly sentiment; it's all bearish. And where Trade the Chain excels is that it is one of five different crypto companies that has a direct API in Twitter, and it takes all those tweets and everything that has to do with crypto on that specific coin and gives us a sentiment about what's going on. And it's very bearish. And I don't blame people. I think they're waiting for these corrections that we talked about on yesterday's video. And I think there's more to come. But if you see these corrections or these dips or whatever you want to call them, uh, after that, what happens? Goes up, dip, goes up, dip, goes up, and, and, and off we go. So uh, don't be too concerned right now. I think it's going to be, you're in the right place at the right time. Not financial advice. This is just where, how I see things. So Everything's looking pretty good as far as the hourly. The daily is either neutral, maybe a little bullish, but the long-term sentiment, that's what I want you to note, is all bullish. Pretty much all bullish all the way through here on this last one. Let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about, first of all. So you see, Bitcoin, hourly sentiment bearish, neutral, but long-term, very bullish, very bullish, 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 very bullish, and so on and so forth. There is one more thing I want to talk to you about is Dogecoin. If you're investing in Dogecoin, God bless you. You know, good for you. You're a you're a real gambler, but uh, I think it's going to end pretty pretty poorly for for, for Dogecoin. And uh, I could be wrong. Hope I'm wrong, but uh, I know that there was a big push over on TikTok. A lot of different influencers over there were talking about uh, Dogecoin would go to a hundred dollars or a thousand or it's just something stupid. It's just ridiculous. But uh, and people were talking about Doge 420, which is today, April 20th. It's almost 1 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And guess what? didn't happen and actually slipped. So I think what that is, the classic pump and dump, um, you got dumped on, son, and that's pretty much what happened. And uh, I'm sorry, but uh, if you would have taken a look at things, I, I think it is the only way it was gonna go. Now, it might pump again because it happens, but you have to take a look at, at Doge and just ask yourself, the team, was there some huge uh, uh, advancements? Was there a great partnership? 
Uh, was there something going on that, you know, like an upgrade to a mainnet 3.0 and there was a staking been offered and there's a new app and no, none of that. So if you want to invest in Doge, go right ahead. And that's all I'll say about that. And then uh, to finish up just uh, real quick to uh, uh, endure into our inner trader, when you click on trade the chain for that one hour projected range right here, let's see what could go up in the next hour or so. So if I was a trader, which I'm not, look at BTU protocol, EasyFi, Sora, Aave, HiFi, and Skycoin. You're averaging around 3%, and this with 90% accuracy, uh, what's going to go up. So uh, take a look at those, and that's all I got. Anyhow, we got a lot to cover, so let's just jump in and uh, talk about what's going on as far as the big story. The big story of the day is this. I love talking about mass adoption. I love talking about cryptocurrency, where things are going, and uh, whether that be positive or negative, and this, my friends, is pretty damn positive. So PayPal's Venmo, and just so you know, and if you're not from America, we use, we use Venmo a lot. And uh, it's owned by PayPal. In other parts of the, of the country, or the country, <laughs> the world, use things like, uh, like Line over there in, in uh, the uh, Asian countries, and uh, UBT, all the different ones, different messaging apps where you can sell, uh, send things. And Venmo is pretty big. It's got 70 million people on it right now. So this crypto just got exposed to 70 million people. So this is what the announcement says. Customers using crypto on Venmo can choose from four types of crypto. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. Shocker, that's the exact same thing that PayPal went with. And uh, of course, PayPal owns Venmo, so why wouldn't they do it? But it states when they make transactions, customers can also choose to share their crypto journey with their friends through the Venmo feed. And if you ever use PayPal, it's kind of just like, here's your money, that's it. But with Venmo, you can use like little emojis and different talks about things. Whatever. Some people like that. I think it's dumb. But uh, it just engages people. So this could be a big thing. And uh, look, if you want to use uh, crypto for payments, now you have it on Venmo. Great. Venmo is licensed to engage in virtual currency business activity by the New York State Department of Financial Services. So uh, they're on top of that. Buying, selling, and holding crypto with Venmo is not available in Hawaii, and we're prohibited by law. So if you're looking for that outside the U.S., it's not available even in Hawaii, even though it's Hawaii is part of the United States, but whatever. So that's what's going on. Again, uh, the more people that we uh, get, we bring in, because PayPal just started this, what, two, three months ago or something like that. And then they're rolling it out to merchants globally uh, soon. They've already rolled it out to the United States. Now we have Venmo on, on board. So again, 2021 is a great year. A lot of institutions are there, hedge fund managers, uh, insurance companies, you name it, they're here. And uh, this could be enormous. Let me know what you think in the comments section. I think it's big, but I could be wrong. And uh, let's move on to our next piece. So next up, um, there's always two parts to crypto and digital assets. One is where things are going based on like these different institutions and players who are in the game. And the second part really is regulation. That's really where the battle is won and lost. Um, and people will say, well, we don't need the regulation from the government. We do. We, not that we need it, but for other big players or big money players to get into this, we need this. And uh, I, if people say, no, we don't need them. Okay, so Biden administration developing crypto regs, and this is being brought about uh, and run through the SEC and the CFTC. So what's going on? This is all based on uh, Fox Business. Charlie Gasparino reported money that Biden administration is what's been described to him by people close to them as the early stage of developing a regulatory approach to the crypto markets. I'm not so impressed with you know the administration itself as the fact that they're actually just trying to get things going and uh, just say, hey, we need to have this discussion, which is great. And they brought in the right people. Like, I know people always talk about Janet Yellen and how awful she is, but in all honesty, she knows a lot about what's going on. And Gensler, uh, who is now the SEC chair, I mean, he was teaching blockchain and cryptocurrency at MIT to MIT students. No slouches in the intelligence department. So this guy knows exactly what he's doing. Anyhow, they're making this a priority followed by taxes. And also, if so in the United States, if you need to have your uh, taxes done, just so you know, uh, there's a pretty important thing. <laughs> Just use what I use. It's very simple. It's called CryptoTrader.tax. Uh, within 30 minutes from when you actually start it up to actually put all everything in as an API integration, you can get your taxes done and off to your CPA. I'm already done this year, Ugh, which is great. If you want to try to uh, earn a uh, unlimited tax report for $300, Link in the description. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna pin it at the very top. Put in your first name and email, and they'll you'll enter to win for a freebie. 
Or if you want to just get 20% off right off the bat, just use uh, Dan. Links in the description for uh, the affiliates. And also, if you're also looking for a uh, crypto IRA, use iTrust. That's the ones that I use. And until May 15th, 2021, you can donate up to, depending on where you're at, up to the maximum amount uh, from 2020 and 2021. And it's uh, tax free. So take a look at that in the description. So back to what I was talking about. Uh, the SEC um, last week confirmed Gensler. I think uh, that we know that. But this would. This is what it all comes down to. SEC Chair Gensler is waiting for some direction from the Treasury for the overall policy of crypto regulations, which I think will be great because then we can get like, say, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going on. And the people that are just holding on the sidelines going, eh, I don't know, is is U.S. going to ban it? They're not going to ban it. Uh, I'm going to get into it. And then while acknowledging that some countries are starting to outlaw crypto, he said, I don't think it's going to happen here. It's hint. Uh, it's not going to happen here. You can you can have that nonsense happen in India, uh, which you know, good luck because in India they have already gone through the uh, India Supreme Court and they said that is uh, you can't do that, and they overturned that ban. Now there's some different things going on in Turkey, which they're trying to ban uh, payments in crypto or third party payment processors or payment uh, uh, businesses, and that's not going to go through either. I don't think, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyhow, it's Turkey. I mean, I have nothing against Turkey or people who live in Turkey, but come on, it's not a global powerhouse. And uh, that's it. So um, he says, uh, I don't think it's going to happen here. Too many American investors are in the space. In his opinion, crypto is here to stay. And based on the people he's been talking to, the government will not outlaw cryptocurrencies, but he believes that there will be more regulations. And here's the thing. People are always scared about regulations coming in. But look, Back in the early or the late 80s, early 90s, early 90s, when the internet was coming about, the government pretty much just said, we're going to do, we're going to have a little bit of regulation, but it's pretty much hands off and we're going to see how this all flourished. And it worked out tremendously well. And I'm hoping that the same thing will happen here. Only time will tell. Furthermore, this is the most interesting part. Sources close to the SEC told them that the commission is debating whether to approve a Bitcoin ETF. That's a huge debate at the commission level between Republican commission, commissioners and the Democrats about the issue. Gensler will throw the Republicans a bone by approving this, ETFs, great, as a way to sort of curry favor with them over other broader policy goals he wants to do at the SEC. So great. If all the Republicans are like, hey, we want this, and Gensler's a Democrat, he's like, sure, I'll give it to you, but give me something else. That's how politics works. And that's what's great for us. If the ETF comes in, all the people who are like... I don't really understand crypto, but I understand ETFs, and they can get in there and go, here's here's your ETF, here's a basket of cryptocurrencies, and just invest into that. Sure enough. And um, this, I know people sometimes get scared, and the rest is boring. I know some people get scared about the different aspects of digital assets and crypto and the regulations that are coming, but in all honesty, it's not so bad, and I think that we need a little bit of regulations. Look. I have no problems with a little bit of a of a uh, speed limit, and it's okay to say, "Look, in the in the school zone, go 25," because I don't want you to hit a bunch of kids and go, you know, 90 miles per hour through there. On the flip side, I don't want to have a bunch of regulation where it's like, "Hey, you can only go five miles per hour uh, wherever you go," so because that would be just awful. But I don't think that is the case here. I'm interested in the comments section, but I think regulation could uh, do very well limited regulation just to get everybody just to say, all right, we're in. And that's it. So that's the big positive story. Let's get to something on the other flip side. So I got an email today and people have been uh, sending me uh, messages about Voyager and their new customer agreement. And I had to take a look at it and it's long. It's super long. I mean, all customer agreements are. All of them are. So what I'm going to do is just give you the highlights and tell you what I think, and um, I'll just be honest with you right now. In the links in my description, there's the exchange and wallet fees. And all the different exchanges and wallets I've ever used or are using, I tell you if they're recommended or not recommended. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, for Voyager, I'm gonna put on hold. And I'm gonna say that I can't recommend it right now. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. And it's because of this agreement. So. Let's get into it. 
Voyager disclosures. It's pretty boring, but it's, it does state this. Cryptos are not regulated or are lightly regulated in most countries, including the U.S. However, one or more countries may take regulatory actions that could severely restrict the right to acquire, own, hold, sell, or use crypto, which would adversely impact their value. Voyager may be forced to suspend or discontinue the ability to purchase or sell crypto without notice. And before I move on to the actual user agreement, these this is all legal speak and things that you have to put in your agreements because you never know. It's just like, like with batteries, right? Batteries will say stuff like, Batteries can explode at any time, and if you're damaged, we won't be held liable. So you're thinking to yourself, Jesus, are these batteries going to blow up my face and I'm going to be disfigured? I can't use these. But again, just legal speak, it's a big CYA thing. Cover your A, and that's it. But there are some concerning things, and let's just go through them, shall we? So I'm going to compare this user agreement to, real quick, to Coinbase's, Gemini's, Coinbase, and Kraken and how they really do all add up. And uh, let me see here, let's go over this one. This, the only, there's nothing really great in, uh, in this one. Oh my God, it's so long. But uh, there's just one section there. So the Voyager Agreement. To help the government better detect the funding of terrorism and money laundering activities, just so you know, federal law requires all financial institutions obtain, verify, and record info that identifies each person who opens an account. This is one of the primary reasons why there's a wait list that's called KYC and AML. And if you're out there going, you know what? I just haven't been able to get in. Well, they just instituted the, the new wait list. And also, if you mess up uh, on the intake form, uh, just know you're going to go through manual review. And that's a problem. But uh, it is what it is. And they're really cracking down over at Voyager. Customer understands that when the customer opens an account, Voyager will ask for the customer's name, address, date of birth, and other identifying information. Also asked for copies of the customer's driver's license, passport, or other documents. When I opened it up, it wasn't like that. It was just an ID, your information, and that was it. Now they're saying they might need some other things. Not that they're going to, but they could if something is suspicious, just so you know. Let's see. Verification procedures may, in Voyager's sole discretion, require the customers to verify certain information. Uh, bank statements, Social Security, whatever. Okay. Here's where it gets interesting. Account funding. Cash. Customers cash, fiat, dollars, whatever, dollars, in the account is insured up to 250000 per depositor against the failure of the FDIC member bank because Voyager is only available in the United States. FDIC insurance does not protect against the failure of Voyager or any custodian as defined below or malfeasance by any Voyager or custodian employee. So when it's in the bank and it comes over, not so much. I mean, you have FDIC insured. Uh, but it doesn't protect against the failure of Voyager. So just be aware. And also, just so you know, Voyager has plans to roll this out globally, and that's why I'm talking to everybody today. Voyager is not responsible for any delays, losses, or fees in correction, connection with a crypto deposit and is not obligated to assist or support customer in any fashion with respect to an unsuccessful crypto deposit or with respect to any issues a customer may experience at a point in time prior to the successful completion. However, that Voyager may, in its sole discretion, provide reasonable assistance to a customer in the event that a customer requests assistance in connection with an attempted failed, erroneous, or otherwise incomplete crypto deposit. And but I will do a bunch of stuff. So what does this mean? This means that they don't have to do anything for you. They don't. They will provide reasonable uh, customer service to you within reason and then go from there. I think, actually, I don't know what to think because... When you talk about CYA types of things, I mean, this is what it is. And the reason why they put these out is so you'll read them because you're supposed to read them. No one reads them, though. They just blow right past it. But, uh, I mean, that's what the channel's for here, to make sure that you're aware. And I've had a lot of people ask me, like, what the heck is going on? Let's go forward for deposits. Oh, also so you know. Consent to rehypothecate. Customer grants voyage the right to, uh, for the notice to the customer to hold crypto. Uh, held in the customer's account or name, and to pledge, repledge, hypothecate, rehypothecate, sell, lend, or otherwise transfer or use any amount of such crypto separately or together with other property with all attendant rights of ownership and for any periods of time and without retaining a like amount of crypto and to use or invest such cryptocurrency at customer sole risk. So just so you know, that's what's going on. And then down, and before I go on, if you look at a lot of things that 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 do these 
these types of practices, you can opt out. You can opt out for all these things and not receive any type of interest or things like that, and they won't do those. But just you know that uh, that interest that you're getting on Voyager comes with a risk, and that's what the risk is. Now, I've been using Voyager for geez, about a year now. Haven't had any issues as far as that part, but uh, just so you know, won't know and be aware. This is the big one. Refusal to allow USD withdrawals. Voyager may refuse to allow a United States dollar dollar withdrawal. Voyager believes that such refusal is necessary in order for Voyager to comply with its anti-money laundering compliance obligations. I think there's something going on with money laundering. Not that I think that. I think that they're cracking down because they don't want to, because they're a publicly traded company. So they have to be that stringent on these types of things. Because if not, SEC can go against them. The withdrawal would leave insufficient funds in the account to pay for any unsettled transactions. Three, the amount of, and this is why they would uh, refuse to allow you to withdraw. The amount of such withdrawal is equal to or greater than the sum of all USD deposits made into the account within the immediately preceding 60 days or the account ownership, naming convention or other details associated with the withdrawal account does not match the account. So again, let me read that number three again. The amount of such withdrawal is equal to or greater than the sum of all the deposits made into the account within the immediately preceding 60 days. So let's say before 60 days, 70 days, 80 days, you took out $10,000 or you deposited $10,000. And then afterwards, you say, I want to take out 12000 Well, they're like, well, past 60 days, you didn't do that, so we're not going to allow it. Even though within the 60-day time frame, maybe you put 100000 in. They're like, no, we could just stop that because we don't, it's just whatever. We're not going to do it. Now, again, does this uh, mean that they will not allow that to happen? No, but they're saying that they can do that. And that's the big difference, right? Because we're going to take a look at the other ones, and it's the same type of thing. All right, so we're moving forward, moving forward. Uh, no leverage. Customers understand that Voyager does not offer leverage of their services, so you can't do leverage trading. Just you know. This is another big one. Crypto withdrawals. Customer may arrange to withdraw and transfer crypto in the account to an external wallet. Great. Customer understands and agrees that Voyager may, in its sole discretion, delay, modify, or prohibit in whale and whole or in part any request of withdrawal, including this. If they believe that such action is prudent in order to satisfy Voyager's anti-money laundering obligations, again, anti-money laundering, again in here, Voyager suspected the customer, the wallet address, or the withdrawal itself are connected to, associated with, or being used in uh, fraud, or the withdrawal is being attempted within 60 days of a deposit of USD or crypto into the account. So let's break that down again. The withdrawal is being attempted within two months of a deposit of dollars or crypto into the account. So what it's saying here is if within two months you deposited funds, whatever you did, and then you bought cryptocurrency, and within those two months you say, you know what, I want to take this out. They're like, well, for whatever reason, it's at our sole discretion. We're not going to allow you to do that because it's within 60 days. Outside of 60 days, then we have no choice because it's in our terms and agreements. We can allow this to happen. Within 60 days, they can just deny it. Just say, well, it's, it's part of our, our terms and conditions. Would they do that? Well, there's been a lot of complaints right now of, uh, of deposits, uh, especially what's going on, I think, with the anti-money laundering. And uh, that's a problem. So if you want to wait two months, that's uh, what you got. I mean, not that it's going to happen all the time. Just saying that it could happen. Customer also understands that Voyager reserves the right to cancel any pending withdrawal. Something, something, something. Okay. And then that's, let's see what else. Interest, you can opt out. How interest is paid? It's, it's within five days of the last, uh, of the last part of the month. Uh, interest program risks. Again, talking about interest. Just so you know, you can get paid interest in all your crypto, but this is the risk. Participating in the interest program may put customers at risk. Loans made through the interest program may not be secured. Customer has exposure to borrower credit risk. In the event of a borrower default, Voyager does not have an obligation or the ability to return affected crypto back to customer's account. Crypto subject to a loan will not be held by the Void by Voyager or the custodians. And the interest program and underlying loans are not insured. So again, if you want to earn interest, there's your risks. And you can opt out right there. So that's the big stuff. 
And I just want to go over other user agreements. And we're going to start right now with Coinbase because that's kind of like not the standard, but that's what uh, you would expect to see like the same thing. Well, if you go through, just look, if you just control C or command C, look for withdrawal, there really is no time frame that they put it. They just said that we'll get it into the reasonable amount. Uh, and that's the big thing. Uh, in Gemini, as far as withdrawals, they state this. We process wire withdrawals to other user bank accounts. They're talking about cash. Wire withdrawals initiated before 3 p.m. Eastern time will typically be processed on the same day or next business day. Wire withdrawals may not be processed outside normal banking hours. You further agree and understand that in certain situations, transfer times may be delayed. So as, as far as like cash and things like that, um, it's pretty much the same day or within you know a certain amount of time. And uh, let's see. It's the same thing, debit card purchases and wires. Wire and ACH, ah, here's what I was looking for. Digital asset withdrawals. Digital asset withdrawals would typically be processed at the speed of a digital asset network. In certain situations, digital asset withdrawals may be delayed in connection with downtime or the congestion or dis disruption of a digital asset network. So it's a little bit different than Voyager there. They're like, hey, we could hold up to 60 days. They're just like, look, at the speed of the network. Not too bad, okay. Let's go on to Celsius, see what they say. And right here, withdrawals. You may make a complete or partial withdrawal of eligible digital assets from your Celsius wallet at any time. Celsius initiates the withdrawal process immediately following a withdrawal request when possible. However, we may require up to three days after you submit. Celsius and a third-party partner may experience cyber attacks, extreme market conditions, and just so you know, this could happen. And uh, we will halt transactions either temporarily or permanently. Users can withdraw any amount at any time. However, our policies may require additional security checks that require up to 48 hours to complete. And then finally, we're gonna take a look at Kraken. Where did I put it? Ah, ah let's see. You may withdraw your, no, let's say, that's not it. Ah, last one. Withdrawals, Kraken reserves the right to require that your Kraken account holds sufficient funds to cover one-to-one -one any deposit using ACH or credit card for 120 days post-deposit. So here they're saying, look, it's going to be 120 days uh, post-deposit and we could stop it. Your Kraken account will indicate if such unsecured deposit hold is required. We may permit you to use such funds to buy, sell, or trade in connection with margin trading, but you may not withdraw such funds prior to the resolution of the unsecured deposit hold. So in that situation, a little bit longer, but I've used Kraken, haven't had any issues with that so far, and that's the big thing. So finally, I know this went a little bit long, but it has to be. Um, in the link in the description for change of wallets, I can't recommend, uh, I can't recommend Voyager right now. We had Steve on the show, well, over at Alex Masculi's show, and uh, we asked him the questions. He's like, "Look, I need 120 days, and we've already gone, you know, 75 days, 75 days into it. Or was it 45? I forgot what it was too. But we're looking at like the around the end of May is when things are going to start to resolve. So the thing is this: when you come to this channel, you trust me to tell you what exactly is going on. And if I tell you to go to Voyager and you're having all these problems, and I've heard nothing but problems right now. That's a problem. And I will just say that I still believe in Voyager. I still believe in their team. I invest in people. And I still think they're going to do great. Just right now, the growing pains are too much. And I can't recommend it to anybody. And uh, it sucks to say because, you know, I like Steve and I like all this, uh, the whole team over there. But um, nobody gets a free pass. And uh, if you're having growing pains, different issues, well, let me just take a step back and let you fix your issues because that's what you need time. And uh, maybe my transactions are gumming up part of the work and there's a problem with that. And um, I'll go someplace else until you fix these things. I think Steve knows and the whole team know it's nothing personal, but it is what it is. But uh, I will reiterate, I still believe in Voyager and what they're doing. I still think they're going to be a great uh brokerage and, and, and everything that they have going on. And with that loyalty program coming down the pipe, it's going to be great. Just right now, uh, if you're new, 
I can't have you exposed to that. And there's a lot of other options uh, for you. So again, nobody gets a free pass. All right. So first of all, if you follow me all the way to the end, that was a lot of watching. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. If you liked the video and found some value, give it a thumbs up. Always consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for uh, listening. And I'll see you on the next one.